Rogers Communications has agreed to sell Freedom Mobile to Quebecor. That's a deal it hopes will clear the way for approval of its $20 billion takeover of Shaw Communications. Quebecor has agreed to pay $2.85 billion for Freedom, which operates mainly in BC, Alberta, and Ontario. All three companies say the sale will address competition concerns raised by the Rogers Shaw deal. For investors, the big question is, of course, will the deal with Quebecor cause skeptical regulators to look more favorably on the Rogers Shaw transaction? a deal that would reshape Canada's telco sector. Joining me now is Matthew Dolgan. He's an equity analyst at Morningstar Research. Matthew, thanks a great deal for joining us. A lot of people saying in the aftermath of the news on the weekend that uh, from the federal government's point of view, Quebec or is probably the preferred buyer. I agree with that completely. I think that if regulators are looking for the strongest potential long-term viable competitor, then Quebecor uh, holding freedom and the combination of the assets that each of those two firms have uh, is is what is likely to be the, the best possible fourth competitor. Uh, is it possible to know, however, uh, whether this is enough to sway the competition commissioner and competition bureau uh, who has been on record as saying that even a divestiture of freedom is not enough to convince the bureau that this deal is in the interest of Canadians? It's impossible to know the thinking, of course, of the competition bureau, but is there something here that might uh, move them off that position? Well, you're right. We don't know what their position really is about this, but there are a few clues that I think should lead us to believe that this makes the agreement more likely to uh, get through. First of all, uh, Shaw and Rogers took a price for Freedom Mobile that was well less than, for example, Global Live publicly said that they offered um, close to a billion dollars less, really about uh, $900 million less. So my thought is that the reason Rogers and Shaw are doing that is because their view, based on their conversations with regulators and otherwise, is that this is the deal most likely to appease regulators. I think there probably is uh, a path for regulators to approve, but even if they don't, and this does go to the tribunal uh, and, and there's court proceedings, this, I think, is another uh, point in favor of competition being enhanced by this deal. So I think there are two ways that this makes the, uh, the Rogers-Shaw merger more likely to get through. And we, as you were speaking, we took a look at Quebec or shares. They're now up 8% on this news. So the market uh, essentially loves this deal from Quebec or's point of view. And you are probably quite, uh, cur the market probably agrees with you uh, that the price that Quebec or has agreed to pay for freedom uh, is a Quebec or friendly price. Again, the stock of Quebec or up about uh, 8%. What remaining work then does Ro do Rogers and Shaw have to do to get this deal across the finish line and blessed by Ottawa regulators? It needs the approval of the, uh, uh, of the competition tribunal, if not the bureau, then the tribunal, which is the quasi-judicial body that would hear arguments pro and con and then make a decision, and also the federal cabinet, most notably the Ministry of uh, Industry and Innovation Canada. Yeah, so those are the regulatory hurdles and, and the pathways for this to get done. Um, and as I mentioned, we'll, we'll see how that plays out, but I think this makes it more likely. To your other point about Quebec or I really think that this helps them in two ways. First, as you mentioned, the price they got or the price that they're paying for this seems to be um, a really good deal based on uh, the, the EBITDA that Shaw's wireless business has, based on the money that Shaw has invested into this. Um, we don't know for sure what's uh, the profile of the Shaw mobile customers, which may not be going in this deal, but I don't think that they're very highly profitable. So just on a pure price standpoint, I think Quebec Corps has done very well. And then when you layer on top of that, the fact that Quebec Corps was going to be entering the market in these other regions anyway, and would have had even more investment, and to me, a bigger uphill battle to build a customer base that now they already have. Um, based on what their plans were already, I really think this helps them quite a bit. It's worth reminding ourselves that Freedom uh, currently does not offer 5G service. It, it operates a 4G network in those areas of BC, Alberta, and Ontario where it's active. Quebec or is saying that if it, is, uh, if, if it becomes the owner of Freedom, it will use its significant financial resources and spectrum resources. The, Quebec or has been a buyer of non on Quebec spectrum fairly recently uh, to enable an expedient path to 5G technology for freedom. How uh, important is that, do you think, from the point of view of regulators that uh, Quebec or is pledging to make freedom a 5G provider? 
Well, I think that's really important. I think it speaks to the bigger point, which which you mentioned, what's going to facil- facilitate it, is that Quebec Corps bought a lot of uh, 3,500 megahertz spectrum last year in BC, Alberta, and Ontario. So um, they are the best complementary piece, in my view, to Freedom with the assets that they add to what Freedom already has. And that um, that spectrum is going to help them, in my view, um, build out a, a better 5G network. So I think the complementary nature of these portfolios um, is one of the biggest keys that makes Quebec or, from a regulator's point of view, at least how I would think, um, the, the most favorable buyer. So Quebec or stock is up because the market likes the price that Quebec or has agreed to pay for freedom. Shaw stock is up because the market believes there's now a greater chance that the deal goes ahead. Rogers stock is also up. Now explain that to us. Uh, I, I guess uh, the, the, the market is bidding up Rogers share also on the view that the deal is more likely to take place now. It's Rogers, however, that has settled uh, for, in your opinion, and it appears to be the opinion of the market as well, a, uh, a, a, um, a modest uh, uh, price tag for Freedom Mobile. Yeah, I think you're, well, Rogers has been trading on the prospects, it seems, of Shaw getting through. So when, when that deal is more likely to go through, the stock seems to trade up, and the stock has been beaten down quite a bit lately, even more than the overall market and its peers. As far as it taking a little bit less in my view, the wireline footprint is what was going to help uh, Rogers the most. And so if that's what they're getting, that's what the market likes. Taking $900 million less for the wireless business um, is just in the grand scheme of things in this overall purchase. I don't think that consequential, especially since when this all started, it wasn't even clear that they were going to have to divest uh, Freedom Mobile. And I, I think being that those businesses, meaning Rogers, wireless business, and Freedom, were largely redundant in my view, this is, in some sense, uh, found money almost. So I, I don't think the price they're getting is most consequential. I think the stock is trading up because the deal is more likely to get done in the market's view and certainly in my view. Um, and so that's enough. Um, with that said, I don't, I'm not convinced this deal is going to be uh, – a, a huge game changer. But again, just the fact that the stock, Rogers to me, is, is very undervalued um, and news that the market takes as good is going to drive it up.